we pass through the archway leading to the Hall of Ocean Life and find ourselves surrounding an enormous hall. What first strikes our attention is the enormous, brilliantly lighted group at the farthest end. We find ourselves looking through the coral forest. We are standing on the floor of the sea. Coming here to the American Museum and seeing these exhibits, you can see that these were artists that were driven to attempt to get as close as they could to the beauty and spectacular forms, color, and moods uh, in nature. The Andros uh, Coral Reef diorama, it's one of the unique exhibits in the museum in that it is a two-storied diorama. The upper portion views the coral reef above water, and there's a beautiful string of flamingos flying. Below the water level, it's estimated that there are 40 tons of coral uh, inside that exhibit. 40 tons of coral rising from the floor of the Hall of Ocean Life. Their serrated branches interlaced as of old and once more invested with the delicate hues that gave them their pristine beauty. Immediately seeing these, you can understand that those involved were in the field. Roy Miner, who was the curator in charge of invertebrates, was visiting the reef below the water level to record all of the abundance and diversity of the coral reef. If it is desired to build a group which will faithfully depict the life of the sea bottom, one must descend to the bottom of the sea. And when he was doing this, which was the 1920s, this predated scuba. So it required that the artists and scientists descend to the ocean floor with uh, steel diving helmets and pumped air to allow them to move about, collect specimens, and record the behavior of the animals. Caverns and arches of coral, fantastic in form, showed clearly through the unbelievably transparent water. If one is careful about crevices and watches not to step on a stingray, there is not much to fear, not nearly so much as there is in crossing Broadway during the rush hour. Chris Olson actually descended to the seafloor and did oil painting sketches on canvas stretched on glass to record the effect of sunlight at that depth, approximately 25 feet, and also accurately record what colors do at that depth as well. So they came back from a number of expeditions with the actual specimens and reconfigured them here in New York City. Olson busied himself in constructing miniature models of each essential coral mass. And these were built up into a miniature composition this gave us a working model. A skilled iron worker began erecting a sloping steel framework in the form of a grid to hold our heavy but fragile corals. The specimens will be cast in wax from the plaster models made from actual fishes in the field and colored to the verisimilitude of life. As you look at the uh, exhibit, it features all of the fish, sponges, gargonians, lobster, coral that occurred and were observed by Miner and his team. A world of life in New York City that would otherwise require long voyages, special equipment, and the willingness to don diving helmet and leaden weights in order to lower himself into Davy Jones' locker. The work that we do today stands on the shoulders of these great artists that came before. Just by uh, the veracity and the great efforts to match nature, there is this uh, humility before nature that reminds us through these wonderful exhibits 
that there is a bigger world out there.